Well, good morning, everyone. I uh, work for the Arizona Department of Water Resources, and I supervise the geophysics surveying unit, and I also uh, manage the uh, statewide land subsidence monitoring program. We need to know where uh, subsidence is happening because you can have catastrophic events kind of like that that just appeared on the video. Well, that vehicle was falling in and that is animated. It really isn't that much far of a stretch as to what's happening in Arizona. As you can see here, this um, Jeep Grand Cherokee um, dropped into an earth fissure that had opened up after a, a large rain event. Earth fissures are a, a common geologic hazard associated with uh, subsidence in Arizona, and they're um, mapped by the Arizona Geological Survey, and so our agency and the Arizona Geological Survey work closely together to uh, use INSAR for monitoring these, um, these areas. Just a quick background on what subsidence is, especially more in Arizona. Um, as you can see, the map on the uh, right there shows that's a maximum groundwater change um, that's occurred throughout Arizona. Um, the subsidence in, is in Arizona is primarily caused by groundwater overdraft. So as we have been installing wells for over a century in Arizona to withdraw water and we exceed the natural or even artificial uh, recharge that's occurring, we have groundwater decline that happens. As the groundwater declines, those pore spaces that used to be held open by uh, water pressure are now held open by air and they start to collapse. Initially, we'll have kind of a, uh, a seasonal uh, deformation where you have subsidence and uplift, but they cancel each other out. That's called elastic deformation. Over time, the, um, they'll become inelastic, which is irrecoverable. Uh, repeat leveling and GSS surveys have revealed up to uh, 19 feet of subsidence in Arizona. These are just uh, the picture on the left is a famous uh, picture of um, Herb Schumann, who is a student of Joseph Poland, who did a similar picture in the in the San Joaquin uh, Valley, the Central Valley in California. And the other two are pictures of myself in the Eloy area um, between Phoenix and Tucson, and then more recently down in uh, the Wilcox area in southeastern Arizona. Like Daryl said, um, we need to have two, uh, two radar images to uh, compare any sort of um, change in phase. So our INSAR program, it's been around for um, just almost 18 years. It started in 2002 after we got a NASA grant. Um, by this time, in 2020, we've identified 27 individual uh, subsidence features. Those um, kind of red polygons are the uh, subsidence features that we've identified. They cover an area greater than 3,400 square miles. We cooperate with 14 different federal, state, county, and local agencies and private water companies to help fund the INSAR program. And our INSAR program is statewide. We're looking at the entire state for any sort of uh, deformation that's occurring. The INSAR data, we have um, processed it in-house since our, the program started in 2002 and analyzed it ourselves as well and make the data available to the public. We have a, a dedicated uh, land subsidence section at our, on our website at azwater.gov. Each uh, subsidence feature has its own dedicated web page, and we currently have a total of 496 subsidence maps that are available for download from the different subsidence pages. And the maps cover various periods of time between 1992 and 2000, 2004 to 2010, and uh, 2010 to present. Those times are basically um, represent the uh, different satellite platforms that we were using at the time. There's all kinds of different kinds of applications of INSAR around the world. Here's a list of um, the majority of them that we're using them in Arizona. Of course, we're using for groundwater management and looking at subsidence rates. We're also looking at using them to look at uh, earth fissures. We're monitoring a recharge with it, seasonal subsidence, important infrastructure, and um, how it's changing floodplains. So we'll, delve, we'll dive into some of these and just show you how we're using INSAR for these different examples. Most important is obviously um, using INSAR for groundwater management. This is the, um, the city of Tucson metro area. 
you can see the uh, left uh, displacement map is from 93 to 2000. This is the average um, subsidence rate during that time. And then the right one is more recent data from uh, 2018 to 19. And you can see the uh, subsidence features have changed themselves. The rates have declined quite a bit in that kind of uh, that, um, that Western smaller feature is not even present in the, in the current data. And due to groundwater management, um, by moving pumping out of this area, they have seen the subsidence rates decline in the, as a result of groundwater uh, recovery. If you look at this next um, slide here, the central well field there is an area we just talked about. And then we have Avra Valley to the west there. That's where the recharge is, is happening of uh, Colorado River water. They recharge the water there and then it is recovered and put back into the system. And you can see the uh, pumpage data, the central well field data on that graph is the, bl the blue line. You can see when they started recharging and recovering water in Avra Valley, which is the uh, red line, they start to offset each other. And now we have a better understanding of why the subsidence has been mitigated in the Tucson area. And we also, with the um, recharge, we have seen um, uplift with the NSARI data because of that. So we've used NSAR to uh, definitely look at how rates are changing. We just showed that with the Tucson area in a way with the water management. This is uh, the Wilcox area in southeastern Arizona. It's uh, the, you can see the um, Sally MG photo there on the bottom left. And you can see there's a lot of uh, center pivots, a lot of round fields, a lot of agriculture that's going on. You can see with the left displacement map, there has been um, there's been some science going on since the 90s. It is even documented even before that with historical reports. And then you compare the, the 90s um, INSAR data with the more recent Sentinel data. You can see the subsidence rates have uh, more than tripled in a lot of those areas uh, throughout that basin. This is that same uh, radar data, the Sentinel data. This is uh, 62 collects of Sentinel-1 data. We're able to leverage very large data sacks to evaluate um, seasonal deformation and annual subsidence. Those, um, the points A through uh, F are there on the graph on the left. This is all extracted right through um, using ArcGIS with all the uh, different rasters. And we're able to plot and see what the seasonal um, subsidence is. You can see there is, there is a, um, a large drop when pumping begins in the, in the springtime. And then in the fall, it starts to, uh, the subsidence starts to decrease. In fact, we even see uplift that occurs, but we have a net subsidence that occurs over the entire time period. And so having these large data stacks really lets us see what's going on uh, seasonally with deformation throughout an area. Here's another example of a, a seasonal deformation. This is an area just south of Tucson that um, it's a large uh, pecan um, operation, pecan trees. And so in the springtime, they start pumping intensively to start watering the trees. And you can see we have subsidence and uplift. And then on the left there, you can see there's a 110 foot groundwater decline. That's one of our pressure trans producers that we use for our, our automated groundwater monitoring sites. And then the um, blue line and the red lines are um, GNSS surveys that we do as well. We co try to co-locate our survey monuments that are um, with our INSAR to better understand what's going on. I'd shown you earth fissure there in the beginning. Um, the white lines are actually after earth fissures. Um, this is, again, this is the Wilcox area, and um, we use INSAR when, to look at areas where we might have earth fissuring, so they form where the bedrock is shallow, and we're getting differential subsidence. So when you see these very narrow lines, um, like you see in the interferogram in this, in this area in here, these lines are very narrow and thin. That means we have, we have differential subsidence where rates are changing in a small area, and this is where we'll tend to have uh, earth fissures that form. So there's been many times where there weren't earth fissures in this area and the Arizona Geological Survey and us 
highlighted that this could be an area for um, future earth fissure formation. And sure enough, after a large rain event, you'll get an erosional feature, an earth fissure like this that causes the county to put up warning signs because these cross the roads and, um, and cause damage to them. INSAR is great for looking at artificial recharge. This um, is an area just west of Phoenix. They started recharging in 2006 using the surface recharge basins. By October 2010, they had recharged more than half a million acre feet of water. Because of that, we saw a, a large uplift that formed over time, just initially right here at the um, recharge basins, but over time it mounded and grew and migrated to the southeast. The green dot is a, one of our monitoring wells that we take manual water level measurements at every year. And you can see there is a large um, uh, rise immediately after they start recharging. And since that time, it's um, since they stopped recharging, we've had a little bit of, of decline. Like Daryl said, NSAR is great for uh, monitoring infrastructure. This is an area in uh, East Phoenix, what we call the Hawk Rock area. It's an actual bedrock high right here. And the black lines are, um, are uh, mapped to earth fissures. The, uh, the, the teal line is um, the Central Arizona Project Canal. And the, the, the light blue line is um, the US 60 highway that cuts right through there. Now this NSAR in the top right there is exaggerated um, 10,000 times just so you can really see what's going on, but it gives you a really good idea of anything that's gravity fed could definitely have an issue through here. It could damage infrastructure. Um, the Central Arizona Project Canal was de designed for 30 feet of subsidence in this area, so they have not lost any, um, any uh, conveyance volume through that area yet. And the, the US 60 does have problems draining in that bowl there when it rains now because it was built after this, um, before the subsidence had happened. And then the bottom right there is um, a, just a graph of the different um, time periods of data that we have from the different satellites. A lot of people don't realize is that with subsidence, it can cause issues with floodplains. This is the uh, McMullen Valley area that Daryl had shown for the example of Arizona. Um, that green triangle here kind of down in the um, southwest corner of the uh, displacement map here is the, the small um, farming community of London. It's flooded um, several times due to, uh, due to subsidence. The blue line coming from the right to left here is, is uh, Centennial Wash. It only flows at, during um, large rain events. And because of those rain events, this town now floods. The right on the right side here, you can see this uh, red box. That's the town of Wendon outlined. And you can see why it floods. Centennial Wash flows through here and the water dumps down into the subsidence bowl. As you can see in the um, aerial picture from 2010, it's subsided several times in the uh, past 15 years. And this is, and this is because of subsidence. The benefits from our INSAR program in Arizona is that, first of all, we're greatly improving subsidence monitoring efforts across the state. We have very important partnerships with other federal, state, county, local agencies, providing that data to them for their own monitoring efforts. We develop and publish subsidence maps and GIS-ready GIS deformation data for the state of Arizona. All this data can be accessed from our website. Um, we greatly improve awareness of subsidence and the potential problems caused by subsidence. And we're able to have a data synergy between our INSAR data and other critical data sets, such as our groundwater pumping, groundwater level data, and earth fissure data. All that is available either through our agency or the Arizona Geological, the Arizona Geological Survey. And it's being used for all kinds of different um, decision making, project planning, mitigation, and uh, groundwater management uh, efforts. I will turn it back to Daryl.